Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar here. I am at the Grand Seiko Boutique in Soho with brand curator Joe Kirk. Joe, good to nice see, see you again. You. Yeah, my pleasure, thank you. So for the goal for this video, this is for me something that I wanted to do because as somebody that has seen the ascension of Grand Seiko in the last five years, yeah. it's been great to see. There's been more people getting interested in the brand and the question sometimes comes up, where do I look to begin? How do I just unpack the mighty catalog of Grand Seiko? So my hope for this was to go through some of the collection. This can't be completely comprehensive, but we do have a wide assortment of watches in front of us that can allow us to get a better sense if you're somebody that's new, or maybe you're more familiar, but just how to look at the Grand Seiko collection a little more specifically. So course, yeah. we have Elegance Collection, Heritage, some sports, Evolution 9 that I hope yeah. to go through. To begin, maybe we should talk about just the movements for Grand Seiko, how, yeah. how you package this together, because I think that's a good way of looking at how these fall, and then we can go into each of the collections. So can yeah. you give us a little details about that? Of course, yeah. I mean, it's my favorite part to talk about is, uh, you know, I'm a big movement guy, a big nerd in, in when it comes to the mechanics of these. And, uh, you know, I mean, for most people, uh, you know, Quartz is kind of like the... It's the lowest price segment for Grand Seiko, mm -hmm. but it also it, it packs so much into such a small price tag. So, you know, you have 9F Quartz is our, you know, in-house manufactured Quartz caliber. And when I say in-house, it's literally everything. Like the Quartz crystal is grown in-house, <laughs> right? We have our own batteries, every component for this watch, uh, of which there's, you know, in most of our 9F movements, over 130 components. So you have a very complex mechanism. It's all made by hand and it's beautifully finished, made of metal, and also built to last multiple generations, right? So this is the quartz watch when, you know, if something stops working, if something stops working, I should say, uh, you can bring it, get it serviced. They're not gonna throw away the movement as they do most quartz movements, which are, you know, cheap, made of plastic. Mm -hmm. They discard it, they put in a new one. With Grand Seiko 9F, it is serviced and is intended to be handed down to the next generation, right? Just like a mechanical movement. So built mm -hmm. to last. So I think that's one of the best selling points on, on and this accuracy. 9F Quartz. And accuracy, plus or minus 10, 10 seconds a year? Yes, that's, that's like why everyone yes. buys it though, mm -hmm. is plus or minus 10 seconds per year, it's always ready to go. You know, it's, it's uh, got a three year battery life and it's always accurate, you know, pretty much spot on accurate. Mm -hmm. So you can grab it and go. It's a watch you can set your other watches to, right? So we have that, and then you have some mechanical options in the 9S collection. There's tiers within that. Yes. So you have four hertz movements, five hertz movements. This will be in many of your heritage collection models, uh, and yeah. then also getting into um, you know, some of your higher end pieces as well. And then, of course, now seeing the new movement, that 9S uh, A5 as yes. well. So, yeah. so there's also that. And then, of course, we have the spring drive. Yes. Uh, which are going to be your 9R movements. And of course, I think many people, when they think about Grand Seiko, that's also what they're going to think about is the spring drive. It's become inextricably, inextricably linked with the brand. I think the, uh, you know, I, just overall, mm -hmm. right? 9S8 series has always been one of our best selling mechanical movements. That's our high beat 36,000 mm -hmm. um, with 55 hour power reserve. But now, you know, since we've introduced the 9S A5 mm -hmm. uh, with the new dual impulse escapement, 80 hour power reserve. And I mean, obviously the finishing, you know a little yes, bit about it now. Of course. Uh, so this, this is like our new flagship movement. That's been one of our best selling uh, movement types now. Um, spring drive has been kind of the staple, I'd say, for a lot of people to get into Grand Seiko. Mm -hmm. So when you start researching Grand Seiko, and that's why we're all here, right? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you end up hooked on spring drive, and yes. that generally will be the first Grand Seiko that you purchase. But then you start studying these other movements and you're like, oh, I need one of those. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need one of those. So it's, you know, it, I mean, that's what happened to me is. Same here. Just got consumed. Same here. <laughs> it's a disease. It so is. taking a step, so we took a step back. Now we understand the movements. So we have those pillars. Yes. Let's start going through some of these collections. Let's start with the Elegance Collection. And to begin, we'll go with Manual Wound, these SBGW family. This is the 231, the original. Yeah. Talk a little bit about this model specifically. It's positioned well from a price range. You're talking about just north of $4,000. Case is 37 millimeters. But why has this model now just become such a staple for the collection? And, and why would you recommend it to people? Well, I think the purity of this watch, right? Mm -hmm. Time only, no date. It's manual winding. Uh, the design is actually influenced by the first Grand Seiko from 1960. So there's a lot of watch that comes in a very clean package. Overall, got this vintage appeal, but it has very modern movement. It's excellent three-day power reserve. 
very compact size and the box shaped sapphire crystal is is a great look right that really contributes to that vintage appeal it's beautiful the price point is amazing at 4300 um, One of the interesting things too is this caliber, 9S64, a lot of people don't realize. People think it's just based on the 9S65, the automatic movement. It came out you know, the following year. They actually redesigned the entire thing. Hmm. So it's not just the 9S65 without a rotor. It is a completely different design. It's still based on the same principles, of course, sure. but the, the layout of the train, everything is, is re-engineered. A lot of people also don't realize when you manually wind this, Right, when you reach the, reach the end of the power reserve, it, there's not a hard stop. It has a slipping mechanism like a, like a slipping an bridle. So it has yeah. that, oh, that's, yeah. So you basically overwind prevention. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you reach the end of the power reserve, you know, the winding. I've made don't that, worry. I've don't made worry. That, I've made that mistake <laughs> before, so I'll take it. But yeah, it's, it, this is also one of the few Grand Seikos that, I, I shouldn't say that now because more are starting to have. Um, but most Grand Seikos have flat dials, right? They may have amazing textures, hmm. but there are very, f there were very few curved dials in Grand Seiko. This was one of them, and now we're starting to diversify that, especially in the Elegance collection. So you'll you'll see another example of that. But this is one of the few with curved dial, hmm. curved hands, which is done by uh, craftspeople. These are actually manually curved by by craftsmen and women in our studios. So you know, there's just so much. It's beautiful within this watch. And now many iterations as well. We've seen limited editions in this model family. So of course, yeah. lots to get lost in. We're diversifying it. We have, you know, four seasons in it now. And yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a great style. And now we're starting to expand in color as well. Now we're gonna look at two GMTs. So this, the distinction here, one is gonna be price, but also the movement on the inside. Of course, yeah. So you have traditional four hertz movement and then a five hertz movement. So you have the show show uh, and then also the two, two, one. Can you talk us a little bit about this? And also the distinction yeah. between the high beat versus when you're going for the four hertz, because I think this is this is also a design language I think of when I look at Grand Seiko, this kind of classic looking GMT uh, that from the mass market perspective, I think is positioned well. And also talking about a refined GMT, we see what typically flies for a GMT. This is very uniquely positioned both from that pricing and also styling standpoint. Yeah, I mean, when most people think of GMT, they think of sport. Obviously, this yes. is not a sports watch. So yes. We have a, a very classic design. Again, once, uh, once again, influenced by the first Grand Seiko from 1960, but it is a flat uh, ivory tone lacquer dial, mm -hmm. and it has a tempered blue GMT hand. It's automatic, our, our eight beat or four hertz caliber uh, 9S66. And three day power reserve. So, you know, you again, you have a lot of watch just like the manual wine, but automatic winding, which I, I think for the most part people prefer in, in general. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people like the interaction of yeah. the manual wine. So it just depends on the person. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, the box shaped crystal, you, you have just this very clean, classic GMT that is elegant but can be worn very casually. Mm -hmm. I see people in jeans and a t shirt with this watch all the time change up the strap, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. It's it, it's just a great, very versatile watch. The lower beat allows for, you know, longer duration. Mm -hmm. And so the the other key benefit of a Grand Seiko 9S mechanical in general is uh, the utilization of MEMS manufacturing. So MEMS is microelectromechanical systems. It's basically electroforming of parts. Mm -hmm. So you can make them ultra precise. So our escapement is completely skeletonized. So it's very lightweight and energy efficient. But also every single tooth in the escape wheel has a little like uh, L-shaped step, which is basically a pocket for lubricant. Hmm. So it has longer lubricant retention. And we developed that for the high beat caliber. It's the 8-6 here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we developed it for the 9S85 when we first introduced mm -hmm. that. And then we have the 8-6 as the GMT. Mm -hmm. But we also implemented it into our 8-beat our, uh, movement because it's just very beneficial. So. So here we have the show show, you know, where we're looking at 4,600 on the retail of the eight beat, this is 6,800. So you do step up in price. Uh, the 9S8 series is one of our more, you know, complex uh, movements, let's say. Um, at a high frequency, 36,000, you know, very few manufacturers do this yes. frequency. And have a history to go along with it. Of course. Like Grand yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we started making in 1968 mm -hmm. at 36,000. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really something that we've dedicated ourselves to. Mm -hmm. um, the frequency is great. It's very stable. The faster it goes, the more, uh, you know, stable the rate can be based on varying positions and also shock, um, you know, shock, throw off the accuracy. Basically, you think of a top spinning on a table. You know, if you pound your fist on the table, 
top's going to fall over if it's going slow. But if mm -hmm. it's going fast, it recoups itself and, mm -hmm. and keeps going. Same thing for a balance wheel. So that is the benefit of the high beat. Consumes more power. So, so 55 hours versus 72. Correct. Yeah. So you have 55 hour versus 72. But um, at the same time, this is a very long power reserve for a high beat. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know, it was the longest on the market uh, for 36,000 until... Until you did something else. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until we evolved, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but that's the name of the game. So again, very classic styling, but this one has the, the dial, dial texture. I mean, the dial is simply phenomenal. So yeah, reminiscent of, uh, you know, the, the ripples in the water as <laughs> the wind blows in Shosho, which is the seasonal phase uh, in summer uh, that uh, inspired this watch. So it's beautiful. Another now fixture within the Elegance Collection is uh, this case, SBGY. Correct. Yes, our thin dress design. So this is our Omi Watari, which mm -hmm. is one of our top sellers. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is a staple in the Grand Seiko Collection for many nowadays. Very thin due to the 9R31 spring drive caliber. Mm -hmm. um, so 10.2, but you'll notice it has this very dramatically curved sapphire crystal. It's like slightly box shaped, but it's also very heavy dome and it's uh, curved on both sides. So there's very minimal space between the hands and the curved dial. So this is the other design that will have a curved dial, as I mentioned before. Hmm. And so they have to manually curve the hands uh, as well on this, uh, on this particular dial or case design. Overall, you have 10.2, but close to two millimeters is actually crystal. So total thickness is 10.2. 10.2, yeah. And then 38 and a half millimeter? For the 38 case. and a half mm -hmm. and is, uh, you know, very short lug to lug length, about 44 millimeters. That's great. So yeah, yeah it, wears, it wears incredibly well. And you're wearing a new one on your wrist right now that I do want to mention to uh, people that are watching. Yeah, this is uh, my, uh, you know, I did, just took delivery of this watch yesterday. Very nice. Know? New watch alert. So this is uh, the same case design as the Omi Watari, but we launched this last night at this uh, at this party that we had, I believe you may recall. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> Good seeing everybody there if you did go. <laughs> So the GS9 event uh, that we had, basically it started, uh, you know, last year we did our very first GS9 club event. It was amazing. And everyone expected us to launch a watch for that event. It wasn't in our plan. It actually secretly was, but not for last year, for this year. Mm -hmm. And so we launched the very first GS9 club uh, collector's watch. Um, so the GS9 club is a collector's group uh, that Basically, if you've bought a Grand Seiko from an authorized dealer since 2017 when we became an independent brand, um, you are eligible for this club. And so if you join the GS9 club, we do all sorts of different events and various you know, gift items and things of that nature. But uh, we just launched the exclusive watch, so you have to actually be a member of this club in order to purchase this watch. And it's inspired by uh, Matsumoto Castle nearby our, our manufacturer in Shiojiri in uh, Nagano Prefecture in Japan. And uh, nice warm gray color will be limited to 299 pieces. Beautiful. Yeah. And it was great to go to the event. I mean, I would also just somebody that was now just more of just an attendee. I think it's a great to see a brand that's investing back into the people that are investing in the brand. Yeah. Also, so it's great to see it's a two way street with Grand Seiko. This is the, the purpose of the club is to kind of bring together a community, mm -hmm. you know, because Grand Seiko collectors, you know, fanatics like myself, it's, you know, and, and yourself. You I know, said it we, was a religious experience. That's what I told Joe. <laughs> so that's all I, that's all I had to say. It, I mean, it was it was insane. But mm -hmm. just to bring, you know, these collectors, these like minded people all together. Mm -hmm and have this amazing event and and to give back to the community that you know really kind of built itself mm -hmm. but really to organize it and and bring it together is just such an amazing experience so and thank you for joining us of course it's, uh, you know it, we were very fortunate to have you there it's great to be there let's move on to the heritage collection of and course, I think yeah. where you start here it has to be with the SBGA 211 the snowflake <laughs> this is the watch when you talk about Grand Seiko hitting its stride Yep. You need a fixture within your collection as a brand that's going to allow you to take off. This was the one that first got it going, in my opinion. I mean, this watch is almost everything to me. You yeah. know, I, 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 personally, uh, this is this is the watch that that sung to me the most. Um, almost seven years, uh, I, from the time I bought this watch originally to you know seven years later, I would buy other watches and then they just you know maybe I'd wear it for a week or two. And then we go in the drawer. Where's my snowflake? You know, it's mm -hmm. like I need to get this back on my wrist. So this is a very iconic watch for us. It brought us, I think, where we are today, um, and it, it just tells a beautiful story. 
You know, this was the first watch that I was introduced to that introduced the nature surrounding the studio, right? It was introduced to me as a tribute to their hometown's winter in, in Shiojiri. And I just thought that was beautiful. Hmm. But the watch is beautiful. That's the other side. You know, it's got an amazing movement. When I buy a watch, and you know, I'm probably in, in the minority here, but uh, probably about 60% is it's what's inside. Yeah. yeah. So then I look at the design. I have to love the movement. I absolutely adore this movement. But then the, the snow texture on the dial, the titanium alloy that we use, which is high intensity titanium, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It looks like steel. It's, very, it's brighter in color than regular titanium, and it can be Zeratsu polished. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta have that Zeratsu. Of course. And, uh, you know, just the whole package is, it's very comfortable too. I never liked titanium until I owned this watch. Change me. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. And this was also one of the watches that it pushed forward this idea that I think represents Grand Seiko so well. It's well done, but there's always an understated idea about it, and it's yeah. in the details. When you get into the details of this dial, it tr takes you in. And it also, I mean, with the second hand, I think this was for so many that entrancing second hand, the movement of the spring drive. We can't explain how the spring drive works to its full capacity in this video. But no, you already did. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we, there's we'll another this, great video. It should be we'll, linked yeah, below. Right? We'll link below. <laughs> You're learning, bro. You're learning. So I will just link to that. But in terms of just the engineering that's involved with it, and also yeah. just the understated idea of what Grand Seiko is, I think this was the watch that allowed people to recognize that Absolutely. concept. Moving right along, this is one of my favorite watches you make. This is the Spring SBGA 413. Uh, released as part of the Four Seasons collection. This dial is so special. I, I tell people the story of, I actually wanted to cover the 415, and I was mistakenly sent this watch. And I'm like, wait. So you wanted the gray and you got the pink. But it was the greatest <laughs> mistake ever made because I saw this dial, because you saw the press photos of, you see the pink, and you're like, ah, it looks too much. But this dial in the pink is just spectacular. It looks like silver right now, but if you get this right underneath the light, it's just this subtle hit of pink. Yeah. It's beautiful. And the case as well. You can talk maybe a bit about the case and its wearability. So the Snowflake has been one of our best-selling watches overall, right? Dominating the collection for many years. And then this comes along. And now they're competing neck and neck all the time. Who's the number one seller, right? These are, these are like some the, the most popular Grand Seikos. And if you would have asked me five years ago, you know, Joe, do you think a pink dialed watch would, would be a number one seller? Be like, no, that's, that's impossible, right? I would, have, I would have been so wrong, but you're right. It's, it's really about the subtlety. And so, you know, and when you look at cherry blossoms, right, there's a wide variety of color. Sure. Um, you know, ranging from white to almost like a reddish purplish tone. And so the key was trying to find the, the right subtle nod that is instantly recognizable as the sakura, uh, the cherry blossom, but also this beautiful texture. It wouldn't be anything without the texture. You know, when they are creating these dials, they make them by press. So basically just applying a couple tons of pressure to a brass dial base. But then from there, you know, the, you have to create a mold beforehand. So the mold is actually hand carved. And then they can press the pattern. That way you have a consistent pattern, but you also have hand craftsmanship. Hmm. So it's, it's really uh, remarkable, the consistency, the quality. Um, same for the snowflake dial as an example. But then from there, uh, we have the 62 GS case design. So this was originally introduced in 1967, and then we did a modern take. And this was really the, there was a series of limited editions that came out in the past before Grand Seiko was an independent brand, but this was the first um, continuous production model. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this in, in the, the entire collection. So two 40, spring drive, two high beat. 40 millimeter case, and I would say it wears smaller than that. 9R65 yes. movement on the inside, so familiar movement, but very much so. It's beautiful, and there's no bezel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is uh, another cool design trait about this watch is it's actually just box shaped crystal, yeah, the crystal. Mid middle case, and then case back. Yeah. So there's no bezel on there whatsoever. They did that to try and you know maybe mask uh, the thickness back in 1967 hmm. because automatic watches were you know not as thin back then and and not as uh, it was more noticeable, let's say. Uh, in an automatic watch back then because most people were used to the thinness of manual winding. So they tried to hide it by eliminating the bezel more or less. Hmm. Let's move to the sports collection now. Sure. Uh, I, I think for Grand Seiko, what I was always, when you see, see the brand for the first time, I think the Heritage Collection really dominated for a while, but you've of course. really put a lot of focus on your sports collection too now, and I think there's a now wide array of different pieces that you have available. Yeah. 
with also different movements. So let's start off with some of the more attainable sports watches that you're creating. Uh, maybe looking at uh, your GMTs here, the SBGN. Um, yeah. as a good place to start potentially. Absolutely. So we have the uh, the GMT introductions that we've been doing. You know, Quartz GMT is great. You know, you have mm -hmm. the independent adjust hour hand, the superb accuracy. It's, you know, you don't have to mess with it, right? It's just, it's always ready to go. So, you know, Quartz is the smallest movement that we have that we make, right? Allows us to make smaller sized watches. And so, you know, we're able to make 40 and below basically in, in Quartz. Uh, with this GMT feature and still keep a pretty thin profile. So this model, and then there's a blue dial variation, uh, which were recently introduced, and then we have the uh, original styles with the crown at the three o'clock. So these uh, with the crown at the four o'clock are easily dominating. And I think it's just the, the compact size that really helps, but um, the crown position at four makes it look a little bit smaller. So yeah. if you're looking for a smaller sized watch, this is, I mean, it's absolutely a great profile. It is. You have the, the durability of the quartz, because obviously, you know, quartz movements can sustain a, a, a lot more uh, trauma, let's say. Definitely. <laughs> just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just great everyday wear. You're talking about just over $3,000 for these as well. Yeah. It's built like a tank. It'll just keep running. Crazy accurate, 10 seconds a year in terms of accuracy, which is absurd. And you can't say it, but I'll say it. You typically outperform your rated specification. You guys are conservative yeah. with it most times. So beautiful. Also within the sports collection, as you can ascend up, you do have some other different variations. Let's take another example of a GMT, how you're able to identify this a little higher end. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is gonna feature our high beat 9S86 again. Mm -hmm. um, we do make variations with spring drive movements as well. So you have, you know, and you've seen kind of the the diversification of Grand Seiko over the last several years. Uh, you know, it's been a continuing trend for us. But at the same time, we're kind of unifying design. So while this watch was always spring drive for many many years, we have only recently introduced it with a high beat movement. So same design, different movement, and that was unusual for us. You know, it's. Two different distinct manufacturers, two studios where we make Grand Seiko, where they make spring drive, they kind of, you know, uh, differ, let's say, than where we make our high beats. And so now we have, you know, the same great style, but just different dial variations. And one of the things that I love about this and a lot of our customers, you have the third time zone with the ro bi-directional rotating bezel, but you have a sapphire crystal insert that's on top, and then anything in white on the on the bezel markings is uh, Luma Bright, our proprietary luminous paint. Mm -hmm. So the watch is on the larger side at 44 millimeters, but because of the size of the bezel, it wears smaller. So I, I don't know, I, I think that this watch probably is a 42, a great size. Probably like a 42, I would say, when you actually have it like- When you, you know, put it on, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, overall, it's beautiful. And this is just one of many different configurations from a colorway perspective that you could go for, for, you know, this range of GMTs too. Correct. So. Yeah, the green with the sunray finish also comes in blue in the high beat movement. Mm -hmm. And then we have a black dial with a texture actually very similar to the Shunbun uh, in black. So that's, uh, that's a the nice new addition for spring drive. It's beautiful. Now, best for last. Of course. Let's talk Evolution 9. Now I think there's three distinct things to talk about here within Evolution 9. Right. But before we get into each one of those, could you just talk about the concept of Evolution 9 you don't have to say about the nine uh, characteristics. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but <laughs> I, can, I bet you I, could, I could, you could it, do yeah, it. Yeah. You could do it. <laughs> but talk about Evolution 9. What, what does this represent for Grand Seiko, and why is this different compared to what we've already seen so far as we're talking today? Yeah. Um, so you know, really, the the design code for Grand Seiko was established with a design called the 44 GS, mm -hmm. which was back in 1967. That set Grand Seiko style as we call it, right? This is the, the design code, the, the grammar of design, and every Grand Seiko after 1967, the design was pretty much based on this concept. And so flat surfaces, sharp edges, perfect mirror polishing to have a beautiful interplay of light and shadow. That's the concept with Grand Seiko. Kind of like, think of it like a diamond, right? Flat, perfectly polished surfaces, and having a lot of them mm -hmm. creates a brilliant sparkling effect. And so, you know, the design that we have for Grand Seiko, all Grand Seiko, is always influenced by the 44 GS. Now, I would be lying if I said the Evolution 9 is completely different because it is actually built on the same foundation. So the nine key elements of the 44 GS uh, or Grand Seiko style 
um, have basically just been evolved on is really what the, the key is of Evolution 9. So taking the best qualities of Grand Seiko style and pushing them to the next level, improving them as much as we can. So you see, you know, more uh, intersecting planes, sharp edges, um, a little push towards a sportier design. Mm -hmm. So more brushed surfaces than you would typically see on a Grand Seiko, um, especially comparing to 44 GS, which is a lot of mirror yeah. surfaces. And stylistically, you know, people like sportier watches today compared to, you know, 10, 20, you know, Definitely. 60 years ago, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the dress style was not as casual as it is today, especially after COVID, you know, I mean, we're wearing, you know, we're wearing uh, we're suits not the norm. today, but you know, it's, uh, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather be in jeans and a t-shirt. Right? <laughs> <Same. laughs> so, you know, the casual lifestyle I, I'd say uh, is, is a little bit more addressed here. And the, the brilliance of this though is the ability to still retain the quality of the Zerat's polishing and make it pop even more. So when you look at these bezels as an example, right? They're more complex than the other Grand Seiko designs. Most Grand Seiko designs have two planes on the bezel, mm -hmm. right? Going outward and inward. And with this, it starts off flat, then bevels down, then bevels down again, and then bevels down and up and under. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about double the, the surface space, let's say. This is a good example of that. And I, I just want to mention that this watch, I think, was well received. But I think once people wise up to what this watch is, I think it's simply fantastic. It's the SBG 285. You're talking about that bezel. This, the faceting on the bezel, it is absolutely spectacular. Um, so this is 9R66 movement Correct. on the inside. Yep, uh, 41 millimeter right. case, very lightweight. Yep. It's beautiful. And then this, you also had released the 283, which is the black dial version. Has Correct. a more of a glossy dial. This is more, you call it, no. I see people calling this the mist. Is that an actual coin term by the brand or is that just so been another? Not necessarily by the brand. Uh, mm -hmm. The designer actually behind this, uh, behind this concept uh, called Asagiri which is like uh, morning mist. Okay, So there we go. Yeah, so this, it, it makes sense, mm -hmm. right? But it is the snowflake pattern. Mm -hmm. So the influence of, you know, the, the Hotaka and Jonin mountain range in central Japan, which surrounds our Shinshu watch studio where we make all our spring drives and quartz, uh, it's influenced numerous watches in our collection. But the snowflake dial pattern, you know, has kind of like the, the mountainous look. Yes. So the original snowflake has the white for the pure snow. We have the blue snowflake, which is the sky reflecting in the snow. Mm -hmm. And now we have the, the morning mist on the snowy mountain, right? It's done. So, yeah, this is With the uh, GMT, true GMT movements, isolated local hour hand. Yeah, that's it. What was really interesting actually last night was I was talking to a lot of, you know, a lot of our collectors at the, at the GS9 Club event. And my next watch is, is this, right? I actually don't, I, I wasn't hearing that a lot before, but I don't know if it was just this event or maybe people were just, you know, really uh, catching it in the showcase or something along those lines, but it had a lot of attention last night. I would, if we sit down 12 months in the future, I think we're going to be looking back at this piece and I think people are going to actually get it. I think they're going to recognize like, okay, this is pretty uniquely positioned. Well, it's been selling very well for us, but it's been out for a very short time. So yes. you can't like assess sales. Um, so quickly because you want to see it, you know, for a full year mm -hmm. and but uh, right out of the gate It's been an instant success for us. Yeah, I put that on the wrist the first time and it was fantastic yeah. Now let's talk about two distinct pillars You talk about the 9SA5 and the 9RA5 because I think both of these are a huge step up from what you're doing from a movement production standpoint Yeah, yeah. we could start with the birch and you can maybe speak a little bit about because th This is where I will agree with you that the as much as this dial is spectacular the movement you cannot overlook. And the fact that this yeah. was the one to me compared to the spring drive, uh, not to say the spring drive isn't fantastic and amazing, but this high beat movement is spectacular. And I don't think people are giving enough of a just understanding of what is actually happening here. So could you describe the dual impulse escapement, what is happening and also why this is such a special movement for you all? Well, I, I have a lot to say about this subject <laughs> and I'll try and, and try and hold myself back a little bit, but Realistically, you know, it has received a lot of attention and the biggest attention I would say is at the Grand Prix de Horology of Geneva. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we won best in men's category last year, which is a very, very huge, huge honor. Um, and you saw recently, we yes. also won mm -hmm. the Kodo mm -hmm. uh, Constant Force, which we did that amazing video in uh, Geneva. Mm -hmm. um, 
just won the uh, chronometry prize. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're on a roll, we're on a hot streak, right? We don't want to lose it. But the white birch uh, definitely received a lot of acclaim. The movement is so spectacular. One, I would say, is because it's such a departure from everything we've done with Grand Seiko since the beginning. You know, every Grand Seiko that we've made has always been, you know, flat hairspray, so no overcoil, right? Always been, uh, you know, uh, you know, had a regulator instead of being free sprung balance and all basically lever escapement. So, you know, we've made modifications, obviously, like I was talking about MEMS, uh, it was a huge, huge uh, impact on, on the quality of the movement itself. But this has an entirely new escapement design. It's not like anything you've seen before. Mm -hmm. And the goal was energy efficiency, right? How do we make it more efficient? How do we make it run longer, but also, you know, retain high amplitude, which is gonna improve accuracy. And so the goal was to make as energy efficient of a watch as possible. And thanks to this dual impulse escapement, we're able to deliver additional energy to the balance wheel through a secondary impulse direct to the balance itself. And which is similar to, uh, you know, if you want to do some research, I don't want to go too in depth because I will lose myself in it. Um, but you want to do some research on a, a detent escapement, mm -hmm. right? That's how we deliver energy directly to the balance. And then uh, indirectly, opposite direction, let's say, uh, is similar or almost the same as a conventional lever escapement. So it's kind of a hybrid of both of these escapements, but with ultra low power consumption. That, that's always the goal. So we utilize MEMS to manufacture an eight tooth escape wheel, uh, which looks like a little ninja star, yeah. right? But it has the, uh, the lubricant retention on the, mm -hmm. on the teeth still. So, you know, I was, which I was very impressed that they were able to do that on, on such a small surface. Um, the other thing is it's a twin barrel design, which these barrels basically feed into each other. They wind and unwind simultaneously. And uh, barrel A, let's say, feeds barrel B. Hmm. And that way they're, you know, they're kind of pushing, driving each other to, in order to drive the gear train. So this watch has a new overcoil, which is, let's say, in sync with the free sprung balance. So the shape of the overcoil was determined after 80,000 simulations. And you think about that, it's like 80,000 different simulations. What we did is we basically looked at all the varying shapes and figured out a way to create an overcoil that is able to be easily adjusted. So typically with uh, free sprung balance, you have to take the hair, the balance off and adjust the spring manually. Mm -hmm. with yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a assemble the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's tedious to yeah. adjust the hair spring. Yeah. You know, it's thinner than a human hair. Mm -hmm. So in order to adjust the isochronism on this watch, there's a rotatable stud at the end. So hmm. basically they made it easy to service despite the typical free sprung balance challenge of having to manually adjust the hairspring. So this, because it's a free sprung balance, you have little weights on the balance wheel that you adjust to adjust the rate. But then that's all you'd be able to do with most free sprung. This, you can adjust isochronism as well, which is a totally new and patented trait. That's, that's huge in watchmaking, but really only appreciated by a watchmaker. Mm. <laughs> so. Those are some of the cool yes. benefits. Yeah, and, and just the reality of it is your 80 hour power reserve and you're also getting a five hertz movement. And in terms of the finishing as well, I mean, you have skeletonized rotor, exposed balance wheel, you have some englage on the bridges. I mean, this is probably one of the better looking movements also under $10,000. Thank you. It, it, no, it very, really is. It's very, very kind sunny. of you to say. It's, uh, I, th I think, I feel the same. You know, yeah. I love looking at the movement. Uh, the, the finishing is quite different than what we do on our normal, um, you know, mechanical movements, yes. which are line gradation stripes. It's a very deep engraved uh, cut that's yes. perfectly polished in each little ridge that you see in the 9S8 series as an example. But with this, it's a more matte finish. And the reason we chose to do this more matte finish, uh, which we call Shizuku Ishi River finish, um, based on the, riv uh, the river's ripples, we've added uh, beveling, which on the 9S8 series and 6 series, we have beveling on the outer edge, but you don't really see it so much through the case back. And then uh, even though the edges are polished, they're not uh, beveled at an angle. So. With this, we're doing the uh, beveling mm -hmm. on, on all the bridges. So we wanted to make sure that that beautiful mirror finish is not distracted from. So we, that's why we chose a matte finish for the hmm. Shizukuishi River finish. Let's move to the 9RA5 now, which 
equally is as impressive, now shifting yes. up to an extended power reserve. This is the most extensive power reserve you have for a spring drive movement that you can find currently? After the eight day. So yeah. the eight okay. day we have is three barrels, mm -hmm. and this is two. Two barrels, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, but th what's unusual about the 9R A5 and 9R A2 is that one barrel is really big, mm -hmm. and then there's one that's really small. Mm -hmm. And so we call these the dual size barrels, very you know simple name, but uh, very effective in terms of how it works. So by doing this, we're able to free up space. Spring drive, a lot of components. You know, even the simple manual wind like uh, the Omi Watari mm -hmm. is over 200 components. Hmm. And that's time only. Yeah. So for this, obviously more components, but you know, you need to maximize space. We wanted to make this, you know, a relatively smaller watch, let's say, or any of the watches using this. If we wanted to do that, we needed to figure out how to conserve space. So by doing the two different size barrels, there's no dead space in between the barrels that you would typically find. And we're able to maximize, you know, the efficiency of the layout. And so that's how we achieve the five day power reserve. But what, what I really love about this is it's even higher accuracy than regular spring drive. So regular spring drive is plus or minus one second per day, mm -hmm. equivalent to 15 seconds per month. This is less than half of a second yeah, per day guaranteed half. accuracy. Oh, that's right. And I'm sure outperforms mm -hmm. that tremendously. Um, the way we achieve this is through temperature compensation. So for our 9F quartz, as an example, the reason it's 10 seconds per year accuracy is because it checks and corrects the frequency of the quartz oscillator based on temperature. So it knows the traits of the crystal, how it reacts to temperature, and will adjust accordingly. So this has a similar feature. It has to be much less power consuming because this is the, powered by a battery, which can yes. give you a lot. This is powered by springs, which mm -hmm. does not give you a lot to work with. Mm -hmm. So we needed to create an ultra energy efficient, temperature compensating, uh, integrated circuit. And so we actually isolate the quartz oscillator inside this integrated circuit with a temperature compensator. And this is a totally new, we call the spring drive package IC, totally new development and uh, is allowing for the higher accuracy, hmm. no matter the, let's say the quality of the quartz oscillator. Because we've done spring drive that achieves this level of accuracy, but it's always in limited editions. So like 9R15 uh, is one of the calibers that will achieve it, 9R96 for the chronograph, and the 9R16 for the GMT. So, but those we only use for limited models. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, we don't have capacity for it. This, you know, even though we're only making one watch that's using uh, in current production in uh, 9R A5 and then one with 9R A2, um, you know, we're able to do it consistently, which is great. And just to move over specifically about the watch too, so it's the SLGA015, that's the new diver for this year. Uh, so this is going to extend up because this is part of the Evolution 9 new movements. There are, of course, divers available more in that $7,000 range if we're going to look there. But this is now going to extend that up. But you get that upside of the movement. You're talking about a 43 in... Yeah, 43 in change. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. you know, it, it's, for me, a great size. I, you know, and it wears smaller than the specifications. That's one thing you always have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. But also the titanium alloy, the, the uh, high-intensity titanium alloy, makes it very comfortable. And you know, it's a, it's a sports watch, it's built with a purpose, right? So it's gotta be robust. Hmm. I'm also noticing the hand stack too, how much space you give between the hour and the, and the minute to get over the indices, that's great. Fantastic. Yeah, the, the hands on that are actually made of titanium. Oh, it's beautiful. Filled with the Lumabrite, of course. Hmm. So the other cool thing about this design is the bezel is ceramic for the first time in a Grand Seiko diver. The mm -hmm. insert, I should say, is mm -hmm. ceramic. Mm -hmm. So we've done full ceramic bezels because it's usually easier to make them more durable. Sure. But ceramic can break. That's the, yep. you know, that's the nature yeah. of the beast. Mm -hmm. This, in particular, we redesigned the structure, the, the shape of the ceramic itself. So, and then inside is, uh, you know, fitted with a gasket. So it's like uh, increasing the impact resistance. So we made it much more durable than, than it would have been had we not change the structure. Fantastic. Well, Joe, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. I hope this was helpful, everybody. I know we were talking for a while, but <laughs> what I wanted this video to be was somebody that's interested in this brand. Where can I look? We just scratched the surface, too. So, guys, I just yeah. encourage you to continue to get lost. Hopefully, this is helpful in your journey. And, Joe, thank you again, as always. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Always, always my pleasure. Until thank next you. time. All thank right, you, guys. Take care. See ya. Bye.